What's up, everybody? It's your favorite gruesome twosome's favorite nerd, am I right? And today we are looking at the Iron Factory Facta and Zorro. I don't know, dude. Voss and Kaon. These names, they gotta relax. This is on loan to me from Paul C. He was here at Skullfest, dropped them off. I did contemplate the idea of just breaking them up and doing them separately, but they are kind of an integrated set, so I feel like we should just do them together. But since there's two figures to go through, we're not gonna waste too much time. We're gonna go ahead and get started. And you know where we start with accessories. Voss comes with a number of switch out hands, which I think is the smart way to do it. Uh, with, with Legends figures, obviously you can't articulate all the fingers, so look what they've done. They've given you posing hands, holding hands, etc., so that you can have a pose that you want this dynamic, but at the same time seamless. So you get two posing hands left and right, you get two holding hands left and right, and then you got get the where my face hand with the little face bit on it, which is awesome. Kaon also comes with a few hands, left and right holding hands, and left and right posing hands. I think, once again, it's the smart choice. Voss comes with this kind of signature rifle. We have the pink paint inside, which does have that like kind of almost a luminescent level to it. And then we have the silver paint around the stand here. So that's cool. It can peg in for storage right here on his back. And using the holding hand, he can hold the gun as well. And he comes with an alternate head, which mainly the difference is these notches and kind of line work in the faceplate. So that's cool as well. And it's styled and painted the same way and has the same detailings. So it also comes with this, which is obviously the combined mode piece. Um, but it's also, they, they have like a, a kind of an added gimmick into it that we'll look at. But, you know, it looks like it's going to be pretty good. I mean, the, the last combiner they did was pretty good. And this seems like a stable rock kind of piece and has like that wicked cool look to it so hopefully it'll all work out uh, let me show the other components to this so there's this piece and this can integrate into the statue and into kind of the, i think a fusion cannon for the combined mode which we'll look at later on in the review we're going to do the statue i think straight away and you know it has a number of moving pieces sculpt is cool enough and just the pink paint did i say thumb <laughs> some pink paint here that's good you know that looks sharp and clean and then it comes with two feet. And they look good enough, you know? I don't know how it's gonna quite integrate or anything, but, you know, silver paint, silver paint, silver paint, silver paint, pink paint. And then we even got some gunmetal paint on the bottom. You know, I like little added touches like that, little pride stuff, I'm into that. So let's take these feet and we'll combine them. You see there's a system here. Then with this piece, fold out the bottom section so it's kind of in an L. These two go on these two kind of indentations almost right after the big toe and that just slides in then we're going to take this we're going to slide on these two bottom pieces there's two channels that have kind of been formed from plugging the cannons in and then these two pieces come up and they fit into these two channels but i'm having a hell of a time getting them to line up quite right and it's probably because I don't have things plugged in deep enough because I want to be able to take this apart so I can send it back. There it is. But um, and then there you have the little the little statue thing, which is, you know, cool enough. There are some like gimmicks to this, like the face plate removes so you can see the face underneath, you know. And then I think even the chest can then plug back in to there. So there's like there's some different options here which are kind of cool. The chest piece comes out also. Like there's there's a number of little like gimmicky stuff, but I think you get it, right? And it's pretty I mean it's 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 kind of like a it's a nice enough thing to display like if you wanted to do them in bot mode kind of standing around like this was some sort of Decepticon shrine or something. Like it kind of makes sense for the character. So I'll actually I'm on board with this where where normally perhaps I wouldn't be. He also comes with an upgrade pack for Tarn, has an alternate face piece, two alternate arm pieces, and you know my favorite accessory of all time, a third party screwdriver, and then some instructions for how it works. I don't have it, so I can't show you how it works, but they can. So let's talk about the figure. Head is on a ball peg, which is kind of expected, especially with this frame. But there's an extra little hinge here. It gets you a little bit of extra down in the, in the neck. So you get down to there, which is a pretty good range, and up. We have silver, red, and gold face paint. We have silver paint on these two shoulder cannons that can articulate up on ball pegs. And then for the chest, we have silver and gold. And then I think that's it. Oh, some kind of light gray paint as well. We have a waist swivel. 
shoulders are on ball pegs the ball pegs on the shoulders are on hinges so you can get them up even a little further it doesn't give you a whole lot extra but it is there and then we have a double hinged elbow that gets you the full run the elbow gets you the bicep swivel the ball peg rather and then we have blue paint accents on the hands obviously the, the hands will swivel where you plug them in and on the forearms and on the shoulder same for the other side then we have the hips T-jointed ball joints, get you the full Van Dam, get you the full Monty, no issues. We have a cut ball peg here for a thigh swivel, and then we have a double jointed knee, which is done the same way as the elbows, which is a hinge at the knee, and then the ball peg. That'll also get you a lower leg swivel at the calf if that's something that interests you. It's nothing that interests me. And then we have pink on the lower legs, and then we have the same sort of thing, a hinge at the ankle for an ankle tilt, plus the ball peg that goes into the foot, and then the slightest bit of a rocker. Not great, but it is there, and some silver paint accents there, and then a toe hinge, which is nice. And then there he is from the back. So, aside from the ankle rocker, it's pretty much money in the bank. You know, like it's, it's pretty much perfect. And the ankle rocker is there, you'll be able to get like a nice stoic pose, no issue. Dynamic poses are gonna be a little bit more tricky. We're getting ready to start the transformation sequence. I started with the fist hands, it's a mistake, so start with the holding hands. To get them transformed, we're kinda gonna do a bunch of swiveling. So we're gonna get these hands sorted where we're looking at the bottom of the fists. Then we're going to turn at the upper legs, at the thigh where that ball peg is, to get, so now we're looking at the back of the feet. And then we're gonna swivel at the knee on the ball peg so that we're looking at the front of the feet again. So basically the only thing we really did was turn the thighs around 180. All right, so now we're going to do the arms. So bring them up on the ball pegs and then swivel them so that you can see the ball pegs and then offset the elbow by rotating down on the hinge and not really using this ball peg for the elbow that you're now going to use to tuck this hand around and hold this peg that sits underneath. So we're doing the same thing on this side. We're gonna offset the elbow and then we're gonna swivel the forearm around so that it holds this peg underneath. So we're gonna disconnect this from the back and then we're going to bring this section up and flip these up. Then on these ball pegs, we're gonna turn these around so that they face one another, and we're gonna go ahead and squeeze those together. Then we're gonna bring this piece down, flip the whole thing 180. Do the full Van Dam, bring this piece around into the front of the chest, and then bring the legs back down, and you can go ahead and close them together. Tuck the head in the back of the body, Rotate the arms up so that the forearm panels are kind of sitting along the top of the shoulder blades and then rotate them up on the ball pegs so they sit together. Lastly, angle your feet up a taste. Take your rifle and plug it in to this right there that came out as you um, kind of manipulated the head down. I'll get it cleaned up. We'll take a look at it. So I think it's pretty cool. I mean, obviously it's like, uh, what's cool about it, I, I feel like is you can have it sort of, you know, resting, like the, the feet and the, the back part will kind of support it. So if you wanted to display it this way, you know, you can. I kind of feel like there's a probably a better way to do these forearms maybe, you know, to have them maybe upside down so that the blue part shows more. I don't know, but that's a personal preference kind of thing. That's totally up to you. But there's probably some fan mode kind of stuff you can do to kind of tweak this a little bit if you like certain elements better than others. But I think overall it's pretty effective and pretty interesting how they pulled it off. Tiger tracks, sucker. Let's talk about them. The head, once again, is on a ball peg. Silver paint, gold paint, black paint, gray paint. So no laps there in terms of effort pretty good range too side to side swivel a little bit down a little bit back maybe just the slightest bit but i think we'll give it to them so for the shoulders ball pegs go inside the chest that come out to a disc hinge which is pretty interesting and then we have the silver bits here that are painted and then the pink inside so to speak and then these also 
you can articulate as well. So no issues there. Bicep swivel once again is on a ball peg at the elbow, which is double hinged with the hinge and the bicep. So no issues there. Gold paint, pink paint, wrist swivel, obviously where the hands plug in. No issues. Pretty much good to go. Pretty much perfect. Butterfly joint obviously is missing, but it is a Legends figure. Let's relax. Same for the other side. We have the chest, black or this dark gray rather, and then gold and silver paint with a uh, waist swivel that's a little limited, but if you manipulate the backpack, you can get the whole range. And you don't need a huge waist swivel anyway. So, All right, T-jointed ball joints for hips. Full Monty, full Van Dam for the most part. Thigh swivel, double hinged knee, get you the full run. Tons of deco on the lower legs. We have the gold, we have the gunmetal silver, and then we have the proper silver, the gunmetal silver on the tracks as well, so no issues there. Ankles, same kind of design with the hinged ball peg. You don't get a whole lot of ankle tilt up, but it is there. Same for the down, it mostly operates off the ball peg. And then a much more efficient rocker than Voss. And then we have the toes that are painted, they hinge up and down, and so does the heel for added support. So there he is from the back, not the cleanest, you know, we have to admit that, but uh, I think we've seen worse as well. I think it's forgivable, especially for how it presents <clears throat> from the front and he does turn into kind of a more challenging alt mode. So pretty well done. All right, first step, pretty easy. We're gonna undo the backpack and we're gonna tuck the head inside. And we can put the backpack back in place, I believe. And also we're gonna start with our holding hands. Leg time, so we're gonna turn at the lower ball peg for the lower leg. That also gives you a, a calf swivel if that's something that interests you. It does not interest me. We're gonna turn this out to the side. We're gonna keep that straight though, like we're not gonna use the rocker. And then we're gonna turn this so that the foot or the toes are facing down and then we're going to bring out this back piece. You know? Then we're gonna angle this just a bit, it looks like, and then turn this entire piece like that. So we'll go ahead and do that for the other side. We're going to turn this 180. We're gonna bring the foot out. We're gonna bring the track out. We're gonna angle this down, and then we're gonna sit it so that they sit like this. Swivel the hands 180 on both sides and then we're gonna good night that's a little tight and then we're gonna bring up the elbows so that it sits at a 90 degree angle all right we're gonna get some of this backpack up and out of the way so we're gonna open up that we're gonna open up these side legs we're gonna bring out the kind of the structure of the chair you have to open up these side pieces a little bit to get this up out and down and then you can bring these up these pieces you want to swivel at the thigh and then you can plug them in to the side of the chair. I'm going to do that on the other side as well. And there's a lot of kind of swiveling parts to all this so just do the best you can and then tighten it up as you go. And then the last thing you do is just swivel here at the elbow so that the hands kind of grip into the bottom of the seat and fill it out. And then you just kind of clean it up and we'll take a look at it. And I think this is pretty awesome. I think it's pretty impressive also at the same time. Now look, I was born at night, but it wasn't last night, am I right? So I know it's just pretty much the backpack unfolding, but then how they make this sort of all kind of work and look kind of look functional and purposeful, whether it be the hands or the tracks on the legs, like I just think it's pretty impressive, all the silver paint that kind of comes through both in the chair and then on the, the kind of legs or, you know, like the gripping pieces. And, you know, I think that's pretty cool. So we're gonna do two size comparisons. We'll do one with Tiger Tracks, obviously. And then we'll do one where we kind of sit a guy in here. I don't know if this is even gonna work, but you know, I mean, it's not hateful. And you can probably get like a, a smaller, slimmer, skinnier bot to kind of make this work, but hopefully anyway. But it's pretty cool nonetheless, you know what I mean? Now this guy actually has another mode and we're gonna start in robot mode. For one, that's how the instructions have it. For two, why waste the time showing you how to transform it back just to get back to this, but you can leave the head in. So rotate these bits down here to the side and then you wanna swivel the arms around 180 so that you're looking at 
uh, the bottom of the screws, the forearm blades that are sitting close to the bottom, and then the, the holding, the bottom of the holding hand. And then rotate them both up so that they're sitting together. Swivel the waist 180. Turn these toes and heels towards the sky. Rotate them so that the toes are sitting on the outside. Then you want to rotate the thigh so that the double jointed knee can bring this entire section back down around on itself and then using just the ball peg flip the foot up so that the toe is facing out and we're going to do that here as well there and then on the opposite side we're going to flip around the part that holds the head so that this is a little bit more flat on the bottom side now we bring that piece that we said we were going to come back to and we kind of plug that there's two handles for him to hold i'm not gonna i'm not gonna force this too much because i don't want to damage anything and you know how that goes but oh there it goes not too bad there and then this piece comes around and this tabs in to the back of his pelvis which is there and now you've got this now, so I'm guessing this is going to be the kind of combined weapon um, for for later on, and it's cool enough, you know, no issues. I think it does, I think it's good to go. I don't necessarily have anything to to complain about regarding it. So good enough for now, anyway. Size comparison wise, there they are with the only legends I have, at least for now. I will be getting those Stunicons, the uh, Magic Square Stunicons. So eventually we'll have something else to compare it to. But that's all I got right now, and that's how it fits in. Honestly, I don't have too much negative to say about this set. The tolerances that I usually have issues with with Iron Factory, I don't really have any here. The only thing I have are the pegs for the hands are a little too tight and just on k -On. This is probably, not to say that it's my favorite thing I've ever looked at from Iron Factory, but objectively, it's probably the best thing I've ever looked at from Iron Factory. The transformation is smooth. There's no tolerance issues. There's no super frustrating plug-in parts. The only part that gets a little weird is plugging him into the gun, but it's kind of an extra thing anyway so like I, I can't really hold that against them if i were to be nitpicky it's just that the hands seem a little tight on kaon and that's it that's really it it's pretty much perfect materials paint sculpt presence transformation alt modes articulation it's pretty much perfect so it can't get much more than a strong recommend from me if you're into this line these characters idw legends etc there's really no reason for me to say don't get this it's pretty much perfect thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care